Hey everyone, Disturb Shutter here, finally back to bring you a brand new album review. I've been meaning to do these reviews weekly, but I got kind of busy last weekend, and then I spent a lot of time preparing for this album review, because I'm reviewing not one, but two albums, because I'm reviewing the new double album from Periphery, entitled Juggernaut Alpha and Juggernaut Omega. So, I just want to start off by saying I've sort of only been a casual listener of Periphery. I've heard a few of their songs here and there, but I haven't really listened to a full album before. So, on a whim, I just decided to pick, pick these albums up and check them out, and I've got to say I'm really impressed with what I've heard. So, let's just jump in and talk about this amazing double concept album that they have bequeathed upon us. So, uh, let's start just jumping around a few tracks that stood out to me. So, the first one I'll talk about is uh, the, the opener for Alpha, which is the first album in the pair, called A Black Minute. And I thought about interesting about this song is that it wasn't really very metally at all. This really chilled, pulled back song, simplistic on the guitars, lots of synthy stuff going on, and a really melodic singing style. And it's just an interesting way to open up the album. And then right after that they jump into track two, MK Ultra, which is super, super, super fucking heavy and it's just a really technical, genty sounding song. It just makes you want to fucking headbang like so much. It's just a really good song. It's just so heavy and then the vocals are just so intense. There's all these really heavy screams and growls and roars and all this stuff happening. There's some cool melodic singing and stuff like that. So there's a lot of very varied vocal delivery from Spencer on this track. It's so much interesting variance in his voice. He can do this really heavy growly stuff, the more melodic singing and then more shouty type screaming. So it's cool how he throws all that stuff together with this really, really heavy but short track. What's also interesting about this track is sort of ends with almost sounds like elevator music after it just drops off the heavy stuff. It's just this jazzy elevator music sounding thing. This is a really cool and interesting way that to end a song that's just that heavy. Track number three, Heavy Heart, which is surprisingly one of my favorite tracks off of this this pair of albums. A lot of people don't like this one because it's sort of poppy sounding, but it's just really good. Now, I don't typically go for the sort of vocal delivery that Spencer does on this track with a sort of poppy type singing. It almost sounds like he belongs in a like a pop punk band or something like that. I don't really go for that vocal style that much, but I think Spencer has a very unique voice and just his range is incredible and it really shows on this song where he goes into some of these higher notes. But this song just really caught my attention. It's just lots of cool melodic stuff happening, cool technical stuff, and all these cool variances in the in the vocals and just that that chorus just pulled me right in. It's just so catchy and so good. It's just a really, really awesome song that I think is one of the better ones on the album. Not that any of them are really bad, because this is just a really cool album. Let's see, track number six, the title track for the first one, entitled Alpha, which is another one of my favorite songs. It starts with this cool, like, chiptune, 8-bit sounding intro, and it gets into this really upbeat, progressive, genty style riffing, and then there's a really catchy singing from Spencer that pulls you right into the song. It's just a really, really catchy chorus in it too that pulls you in. And then the later half of the song is just, it gets heavier and there's some more variance in the vocals and it's just changing up and it goes into a whole different direction. And then I think that's a cool way how they just progress from sort of a verse, chorus, verse type thing into a always progressing ending part of the song. And then that flows right into 22 Faces, which is just a really heavy technical song with some really amazing singing from Spencer all the way through. It's just a really good song. And all the guitar and bass work on this song is just really cool. And this, they work together really nicely. Uh, one more track from the first one I want to talk about. The closing for Alpha, which is Psychosphere, which is just really heavy, slow, groovy type of song. And then Spencer's doing a lot of like pullback, slow... Uh, sort of melodic type of singing throughout the whole thing with a few screams laced in there. It's just the way the song's structured is really interesting and it really caught my attention. Now let's jump to Omega. The opening reprise sort of is a callback to a black minute where it uh, sort of repeats that for just the, or some of the parts from that for just a shorter period of time. And then it jumps into The Bad Thing, which is another really good song. It's got this heavy stuff and this really cool singing in it. I have much to say about the song, but it's a really cool song worth checking out. Track number three is my personal favorite from the entire, entire pair of albums, which is surprising because it's more pulled back, simplistic, melodic, poppy-ish kind of song. 
Whereas I usually go for a lot of heavier kind of stuff, but I really like this song. It's just a really awesome song. It's got these acoustic guitar work and all these clean guitars and some distorted guitars, and they're all just jammed in there and they work together so nicely. It's just a really cool sounding song. Plus, the chorus just really catchy and it really, the really powerful vocals and really powerful lyrics throughout the whole thing. It's just a really great song and it's definitely worth checking out. Track number four, Graveless, is. It, right after that, it's really heavy and powerful, and it's got all these screams in it, and then it has a really catchy melodic chorus, so it has that cool variance between that really heavy, growly stuff and the more melodic singing. Track number six, Omega, which is freaking 11 minutes and 44 seconds long. It's just a really long song. It's the title track for the second half of the album. It's just really cool. So I start with this interesting piano intro, and then it moves into really heavy, genty riffing and stuff like that, and it's really progressive, and it changes throughout the whole whole song, it's just always changing, and then there's this part in the middle where it alternates between heavy and this really fast pace, but very melodic singing, and it's just a really catchy part that Spencer's doing on the vocals, and this it alternates between that as well as this really melodic but fast-paced guitar playing, it's just really cool the way this whole song comes together. Now what I really like about this song is if all that other stuff was enough, it has a lot of interesting reprises of uh, previous songs, like, uh, I forget which one, it jumps back to another song, alright, it jumps back to the melody that was in A Black Minute, not the same vocals, but the same me vocal melodies, and then they reprise the chorus from Alpha in there, it's just a cool way to sort of show it coming full circle in a way. And then, finally, track number seven on, on Omega, which is uh, Stranger Things, which is just a really cool progressive song. It has this cool melodic opening bit. And then, like, about two minutes in the song, Spencer does this ridiculous falsetto. It just comes out of nowhere, and it's just so amazing that he can do that with his voice. It's just really cool little little bit in that song. Plus, overall, this song is just interesting. It starts with the more melodic stuff, and it gets really heavy in the middle, and then it goes back to that melodic opening bit again at the end. It's just a really cool way to end this song. It's just a really cool song. And it's a cool way to end this giant double album. So those are a few of my favorite tracks on the album, but like I said, all of them are really good in their own right, and they're all really different. And then when you're listening to this album, or both of these albums together, as one continuous piece of music, it's just really cool how one song flows into the, the next one. And these little bits where they like do a little bit of a jazzy bit in the middle, or piano intro that sort of bridges the gap between two songs or something like that. Just the way they all come together as one continuous piece of music is really cool. So props to the guys at Periphery for bringing the, this story to life. One interesting thing I like, because like I did said, it is a concept album, and it's telling a one story throughout this entire journey through these two albums. But they haven't really come out outright and said exactly what it is. They're leaving it up to a lot of fan interpretations. Like, well, I kind of think, because it has track number two, MK Ultra, which is the name of uh, infamous uh, CIA experiments on uh, human subjects about, like, mind control and stuff like that. So I was wondering if the story is somehow related to that in some way, like if it's telling the story of someone who was a part of that experiment or some, like, sci-fi take on that experiment. But I'm not really sure, but it's just really cool. And I read this really cool theory on Reddit about this whole, like, meta-human thing with, like, being bound to hell or something like that. It's really, uh, if you just, like, Google it, you'll probably find it. I'm not really good at explaining it, but this is a really interesting and really plausible fan theory that I think is worth checking out. But, I mean, I think at some point Periphery will come out and say what the story actually is, but I think it's cool that they're living up to interpretation. Whatever the story is, it's really cool, and the way they're telling it through music is really cool. So, more thoughts on the album... I think this is a double album done right. Because sometimes a double album can come off kind of eh. Like, take for uh, instance 2013's double album from Five Finger Death Punch, The Wrong Side of Heaven, The Righteous Side of Hell, where it sort of felt like there was a lot of songs that were mediocre. Like, if they had released one album with the best songs from each one, it would have been a really good album, but they didn't do that, and it just didn't work out nicely. But Periphery did a good job. And I think it's similar to... Uh, uh, a couple of years ago, or sort of last year and the year before, or was, I don't remember how long ago it was now. It was actually two years ago, yeah. Um, Stone Sour's double album, their most recent double album, uh, House of Golden Bones, where they just 
had all these really amazing songs and it told one continuous story and there's a lot of moments where they reference other songs in the in the story in the double album that just works really well and periphery does the same thing here throughout this whole album there's a lot of instances where they're repeating stuff in different ways like for example in omega they call back to uh, alpha with the reprisal of the chorus or they use the same melody there that was in black minute or the scourge on alpha has this part at the end which is the vocal part from uh psychosphere which is the last track on that album so a lot of cool moments from that, like that where they mix in like re re repetitions like that. And there's a lot of moments where the in the in the lyrics themselves where they reference similar events that were referenced in other lyrics. So just as one continuous narrative, it's really cool how they did that, and I think it comes together really nicely. So that's just some thoughts on the album. So let's jump in and I'll talk about the actual band members themselves. First off, I want to talk about Spencer on vocals. Man, this guy is incredible. I don't typically go for the sort of, I don't know, pop punky type of vocal delivery that he does that you see in a lot of like pop punk bands or like, um, what you want to call it, post hardcore bands and stuff like that. But he's got a really amazing voice and I really like what he's doing on this album. And he just has such an incredible range. He's got these melodic bits where he, and he can do like a sort of lower singing and he can go up and do these higher notes and he can hit uh, those falsettos. It's just incredible what he can do. And then his harsh vocals, he has these really intense growls and he has all this variances in his screaming. He has these high screams and low screams and all, all this comes together really nicely. He's just got so much talent and he's using all that in different ways throughout the entire album. Like, you have a song like MK Ultra where it's super heavy, or you have a song like Heavy Heart where it's more melodic, and he can do all that stuff, and it just comes together so nicely. So, this guy is an incredible addition to Periphery. Like, a lot of people are saying they don't like the vocals, but I really like the vocals, and I think he's part of the reason what makes them stand out in the gent movement, where a lot of bands sort of have a similar sound, but there's a few, like Periphery, that have a really unique sound, and I think uh, Spencer's vocals is one of the things that contribute to that. So, like I said, he's doing an amazing job on this album. So, let's talk about Misha, Jake, and uh, Mark on guitar. There are just so many ridiculous guitar parts on this album. Where either they're doing this super technical, genty riffing like on MK Ultra or on Omega. Or you have uh, more melodic playing like on Heavy Heart or uh, Priestess. Or they can really do it all. Whether it's these really heavy technical riffs or the more melodic stuff, was like all of it's really good in its own right. And I think the amount of variance on the guitar throughout the whole thing, and the fact that they're actively using these three, three guitarists at all times, where you have this incredible layering of different guitar parts together, and this comes together so nicely. A lot of bands that have three guitarists don't really use them to their full potential, but Periphery definitely does a good job. We'll talk about Adam Nolly, uh, or Nolly as he's called. Uh, his nickname, on bass. The bass is just turned up so loud and so technical. It's just keeping up with all this crazy guitar stuff and doing unique stuff that's different from what the other three guitars are doing almost all the time. It's just, this bass is just turned up so loud and I always like to hear that and it's just it's got this incredible tone to it and it's just really adds to the, the meat of this album. And finally, Matt on drums doing another amazing job just like everyone else in this band just super technical drumming and it's varied throughout whether they're doing a more simplistic pullback song he can fit in nicely there or they're doing a really heavy fast technical song like MK Ultra. it's just they have all of that together and they work so well together all of, all of these guys they're doing an amazing job and they have great band chemistry and the stuff they're creating is just fantastic music and the fact that they wrote 17 songs worth of fantastic music for like almost two hours worth of music on this, these double albums. It's just so good. And every song is good in its own right. So these guys just are amazing. Finally, they wrap up. If you're new to Periphery, definitely start with this. This is some good stuff to check out. But you should definitely check out some of their other stuff too. Because they just make good music all the time. But this is a really good uh, jumping in point. Because they've got a lot more pullback melodic stuff that... Uh, from bringing new listeners who are just sort of getting into the more technical kind of stuff. But there's all kinds of good heavy stuff on here as well, so it's got so much variance that this is a great starting point for new Periphery fans like myself. And I think I'm definitely going to check out some of their older albums and really get into more of their music because I'm just blown away with what I heard here. So, 
I think these double albums have a potential to be uh, some of the best albums this year. So I'm really looking forward to whatever they do next after this fantastic endeavor that they've taken with this double album. So overall, uh, Juggernaut Alpha and Juggernaut Omega are really good albums and you should go check them out. And I will see you guys later with another review.